Hi everyone, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small. Today we're doing another unit overview from the German Bulge book. This time we're looking at the mighty Jag Panther. This is a rather interesting vehicle. It is obviously from the Panther lineage, as the name would indicate, and uh, it is a basically a fixed gun, uh, self-propelled gun version of the Panther. So let's talk about the stats a little bit about this nice uh, uh, beast of a tank that we've got here. It's got a front armor of nine, side armor of five, top armor of one. So uh, armor layout wise, it's the same as a regular Panther. Uh, armor wise, it's even weaker than the uh, Panther late that's included in the bulge book. Uh, we haven't done a unit overview for that one yet. Uh, but that panther, uh, the late panther, has a front armor of 10. The Yog Panther, though, is still carrying a rather respectable front armor of 9, like um, the original panthers in the game. So the uh, stats are 4-plus um, confident motivation, 5-plus counterattack because of that self-propelled gun uh, penalty, and uh, the third right last stand, so it's got a 3-plus there. Skill-wise, it is a, a veteran 3+, so it's going to be using that 3-plus skill for almost everything except for assault, where, again, the self-propelled gun penalty kicks in and makes that a 4-plus. Speed-wise, we've got a tactical of 10, terrain dash of 14, cross-country of 20, road dash 24, with a 3-up cross-check. So it can cross pretty well. Uh, Gun-wise, it's got a massive 8.8 centimeter long barrel gun that has a range of 48 inches, so it can shoot uh, 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 pretty much cover almost the whole table from the get-go. It gets two shots halted and one shot moving with a anti-tank of 17 and a firepower of 3+. plus. Uh, the gun does have the forward firing rule, but that's pretty obvious for a uh, self-propelled gun like this. It also has a machine gun, so it is giving you three shots of um, a machine gun fire. Um, it's better than nothing. You know, the normal Panther, I believe, has four shots, so it's not hurting too much behind that. And if you have a couple of these in a platoon, um, you might have enough machine guns to stop uh, infantry assault. But otherwise, um, yeah, you're relying on that gun. So these are pretty pricey tanks in the game. And I think the main reason you're paying a premium for this is that AT-17 um, gun, that AT-17 gun, which there's not much out on the, the table as far as what the allies can field. Um, that's going to come close to, to stopping, you know, the... Uh, <laughs> the might of this gun, which is kind of scary. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, what it might face in the bulge book. So right now the American bulge book is the only kind of uh, competitor out there. Eventually I think the British bulge book is coming. Um, but you've got, uh, you know, starting at the top of the, the chain, something like the uh, Super Pershing. Which there's only one of them, so you know the the Panther technically, uh, Yog Panther technically shouldn't be worried too much about it. Even then, with its uh, front armor, I believe it's 13 on the Super Pershing. Um, you know the anti tank 17 has got a pretty good chance of of punching through it. The um, next ice would be something like the Pershing itself, which is very analogous to the regular Panther. It's got a front armor of nine as well. Um, it's got an AT-14 gun like the normal Panther. Um, the front armor 9, though, is no match for AT-17. Um, the Yog Panther is going to punch through a Pershing just like it was a front armor for Chaffee. Um, at this point, the Americans are paying for armor that's useless. That said, I think one of the deadliest things for um, the Yog Panther itself is from the front AT-14 units, things like the um, Pershing, the uh, M36 Jackson tank destroyer, um, even high AT-13, like uh, the high velocity that you can get on a Hellcat or an M10 or the uh, Sherman 76s, 
represent a significant threat to front armor 9. Um, even at long range where your front armor bumps up to 10, um, you know, you're, you're still failing that armor penetration roll a third of the time, which is scary. Uh, another, uh, I think, Achilles heel for something like the Yog Panther is something like the Chaffee, something small where you might be able to field a lot more of these. And um, even though the front gun or the main gun of a Chaffee, AT-10, just like a normal Sherman, can't really hurt the front of a Panther, once you get on the side, um, AT-10 is very deadly against side armor 5. Um, you know, you need a, the German player needs to roll a 6 to bounce, a 5 to equal, so 66% of the time <laughs> the very expensive Yog Panther is going to be penetrated. So that's kind of a look at what the Yog Panther might be facing. Now against the, uh, the Russians, we don't have a late, late war Russian book out yet. I don't know what or if we're going to get one, but things like IS-2s, uh, the ISU family, similar to what we were talking about in the King Tiger video, um, AT-17 is just punching right through those. And in some ways, I think this tank might be better used uh, facing Soviets with their bigger um, tanks that still don't provide much per, uh, better protection versus AT-17 than a light tank does. All right, so um, let's talk about how you can feel them. You can feel these Yog Panthers one of two ways. First way is the dedicated Yog Panther Tank Hunter Company. So you can actually take them as their own formation and that you need an HQ of uh, Yog Panther then you have one mandatory platoon of Yog Panthers, and then your second mandatory platoon can be Yog Panthers as well, or you could take Hornacy's, uh, Panzer 470, or even uh, something like a Stug platoon. So you could go very cheap and take like a Stug platoon as your second mandatory um, in this type of formation. Uh, then there's a third optional Yog Panther uh, platoon, and then Last but not least, you have the AA um, component of the formation, which again, for something like this that does have a front armor one, I think um, allied air, particularly Stukas, are going to love trying to drop bombs on this. Not Stukas, uh, Sturmoviks. Um, so you got to you got to watch out for that. Same thing with the allies. Um, you've got some. Top armor one that uh, bombs might just might just love. So having a, a built-in AA component into your formation uh, does two things. It uh, you know keeps your formation around longer and it protects you from pesky allied air. Uh, so the second way you can run it is just taking it as a black box support for some other formation. Just add in a unit of uh, Yog Panthers into the formation. Do I think the um, the Yog Panther is uh, a good vehicle? Well, I think it looks cool. Um, just like a lot of German armor, it's got some style to it. It looks pretty good. I think it looks better than probably its closest uh, competitor in the German list, which would be the like the Panzer 470, which is very similar uh, to the Yog Panther, but with that uh, weaker gun, I think it's AT-14 on the Yog Panther 70. Um, but AT-14 is great against most allied armor. You know, it's only running into problems when it runs into very rare things like a Super Pershing. Um, you know, even even things like American Jumbos have to be careful around it. Um, you know, IS-2s. Though those things on the Russian side have to look out for AT-14. Uh, there's still a, a good chance to bounce though, whereas this kind of removes that, that possibility of, of bouncing the shot with AT-17 for the most part. Uh, but I think if you're fighting uh, Western allies and you want to go self-propelled gun, points-wise, I think the Panzer 470 might be something you want to look at. Now, style-wise, I think the Yog Panther looks a whole heck of a lot better than the Panzer 470. Um, I just think it's a cooler looking vehicle. And for a lot of people, me included, that's a good enough reason to field them. Um, again, I, I don't foresee these being in a lot of tournament winning lists, but I'm not a big super tournament player. I, I like to play because I 
like how cool this stuff looks and i think this definitely has the rule of cool going for it similar to when we were talking about our um, sturm tiger where there's probably better choices for that uh for those points in your list but boy does it look cool so ultimately it's up to you guys as far as what you want but there you go that that's just kind of a quick um unit overview for the Yog panther out of the german bulge book it's a fantastic book i really like it i like the options it's giving the germans uh even things like the um the command cards offer really interesting options but We'll cover that in a, in a separate video um, when we do our overall review of the uh, German Bulge book. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the Jag Panther tank for the Germans. If you do, please do consider giving us a like and subscribe. Click that bell to receive notification when we release new content. If you like our Flames of War content, please do check out our Patreon, where patrons get access to a Flames of War battle report every month exclusive to them. I know some people have been asking me where are the YouTube Flames of War battle Battle reports if in a given month I don't have the time or, or the schedule to be able to film two Flames of War battle reports the battle the first battle report that we do goes to uh, our patrons and we appreciate all the support they give us there so if you're itching for more battle reports check out the patreon it's pretty cool all right guys there you go thanks for watching and keep on gaming